Laura, this is the uh, virtual reality headset. I'm going to be putting it on you right now, okay? Okay. In this demonstration, the young woman is not about to play a virtual game. She's about to ride on a virtual subway as she enacts the behavior of someone with panic disorder. And here's what she might feel on a real subway. I just feel really closed in. I feel like um, my heart's going to start beating really fast. And she worries. I won't be able to get enough air. I won't be able to breathe and I'll pass out. But in the virtual subway, she can comfortably look around. She controls this by turning her head. And with a mouse, she can control her movement within the virtual subway. Should I go in? If you'd like. Her anxiety is monitored on a zero to eight point scale. Where is she now? Probably like a, a four. four. Okay. So a moderate level of anxiety. Right yeah. Now. Okay. okay, the subway is going to be leaving the station now. Okay. Are you ready? Um, yeah. For the patient, the virtual subway can be safer than the real subway. Somebody may be uh, too afraid to actually go down and get on the subway and to experience the physical sensations while riding the train. There are a number of different virtual reality programs available. Virtual reality permits the control of movement, intensity, and duration. Some more people are getting on the train. It's getting a little bit more crowded. Virtual reality can be used as one component of exposure therapy. It can provide a bridge to the real world where patients soon test their new skills. But in some locations, real subways or other feared stimuli may not be available. And virtual reality can simplify this. That's very, very useful for situations that are hard to recreate. So we have a lot of people who have a terrible time with thunderstorms. And of course, a lot of people have a terrible time with flying. Research has compared fearful flyers who receive virtual reality training with fearful flyers receiving exposure therapy at an airport. Both groups were found to be equally successful when it came to taking real airplane flights. The initial research makes it look, um, you know, very good. It looks like it's comparable. But I think we need to see more studies. Our own Psychologist David plan. Barlow is director of Boston University's Center for Anxiety and Related Disorders where a variety of virtual reality programs are used. And in spite of a cartoonish look in many virtual programs, most of the patients in that setting find the experience uh, to be very, very real. But the virtual world doesn't work for everyone. So we find a number of people who say, this just doesn't do it for me. And there are other drawbacks. Is that the virtual reality technology is still relatively expensive. And there's only a few anxiety clinics around the country that uh, have it available. People with emotional disorders typically exhibit similar patterns of behavior and thought processes. They tend to kind of overestimate the danger associated with intense emotional experience. During virtual exposure, therapists can challenge these thoughts and help the patient modify them. Okay, on a zero to eight point scale, how anxious do you feel right now? Six. How about a six? What are the consequences of those of those feelings? What are the consequences of those sensations? Well, that I, I might pass out. When you've had a panic attack in those situations, how many times have you passed out? Well, none. They avoid emotional experience to the greatest extent possible. They do this by attempting to clamp down on their emotion. Go ahead and experience the sensations. Go ahead and experience the panic sensations. You don't do anything to distract yourself. I want you to experience those feelings. And the idea is that um, you want to elicit the sensations that you're afraid of, and over time, you'll find that those sensations are not actually dangerous. The fear patients feel when experiencing panic can often result in quick action to reduce fear. And there's a strong action tendency or compulsion to run away or flee. By remaining in the virtual program, anxiety often goes down. Can you tell me how anxious are you feeling right now? Like a two or a three. Like two or a three, so pretty mild. I feel pretty mild. Excellent. Okay, here we are. This is your stop. I could go ahead and move out of the train. Virtual reality programs as they currently exist can be helpful. And we expect the price to come down, the applications to increase, the uh, uh, reality of the experience to increase. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised in 10 years to see this to be a very, very common uh, method for working with anxiety and fears.